In this video, we are going to explore somewhere that is normally totally off limits to everyone. The bunker and tunnel system that survives beneath Hitler's private house, the Berghof, that once stood on this hillside at Obersalzberg, a Nazi gated community for Hitler and other top leaders some five kilometers up the mountain from the Bavarian town of Berchtesgaden. The extensive tunnel system was constructed to provide Hitler, his girlfriend Eva Braun, his personal staff and his bodyguards with a comfortable refuge in the event of an Allied bombing attack or some sort of parachute or commando attack on Hitler's village. Miles of other tunnel systems also exist beneath Obersalzberg, mostly constructed on the orders of Martin Bormann, Hitler's powerful secretary, to provide air raid shelters and also an underground headquarters to keep the Nazi state functioning in the event Hitler had decided to decamp to Obersalzberg in the last weeks of the war. Very little of the tunnel complex is open to the public, but it is all intact, unlike most of the Nazi leaders' homes that once stood above ground. Many, including Hitler's palatial villa, were badly damaged in an RAF air raid on the Obersalzberg on the 25th of April 1945. Hitler had left in 1944 never to return, but the houses and subterranean tunnels were all kept in perfect working order and heavily guarded in case he returned. Much of the contents of Hitler's bunker was dragged topside by the SS and burned before they set light to the house on the 4th of May 1945 before abandoning the village and its properties to US forces. When the Americans arrived, they found a chaotic scene of damaged buildings and a moonscape of craters caused by the British bombs, but discovered the huge tunnel systems to be completely intact and still full of furniture, equipment, weapons and art. Many of the buildings were subsequently repaired and used by the American occupiers, and many survived today. But Hitler's Berghof remained a special case, and in 1952 it was blown up and the hillside planted with trees. But Hitler's bunkers beneath remained untouched, apart from having been extensively robbed of their fixtures and fittings by locals. The bunker's entrance and the emergency exits were either bricked up or securely locked, and have remained largely so to this day. However, I am indebted to Bega Film for kindly allowing me to use footage from an exploration of Hitler's bunker made some years ago, and if you want to see more footage of Hitler's bunker and those of the other Nazi leaders, please visit the Bega Film YouTube channel, link in the description box. The closest tourists could get to Hitler's bunker system was by exploring the bunkers beneath the Hotel zum Türken, the Bavarian hotel that was used to house members of Hitler's special bodyguard unit, the Reichssicherheitsdienst, the RSD, the house being adjacent and slightly above the Berghof. The hotel's bunkers are in fact part of the system beneath the Berghof. This is as far as I got a bricked-up passage, beyond which lies Hitler's and Eva Braun's personal quarters. Unfortunately, with the closure of the Hotel zum Türken a few years ago, it is no longer even possible to see any part of the Berghof tunnel system. However, occasional official expeditions have been permitted access, so using historical film shot by the US 101st Airborne Division in mid-May 1945, and modern film shot by Bega Film, I'm going to give you a then-and-now tour of the hidden Berghof bunkers. There are two ways into Hitler's bunker today, both originally emergency exits. The way Hitler and his entourage would have accessed the system was through this wall. The only surviving part of Hitler's house today are the massive retaining walls that stood just behind the property to hold back the hillside above. In Hitler's day, the bunkers were accessed via the Berghof's rear door and across a small open space to a door here. If you look very closely, you might notice that the concrete is slightly lighter, indicating where the door once stood. And here is that door in 1945, guarded by a US paratrooper. If we follow this 101st Airborne Division war correspondent inside, he descends a series of marble steps under the hillside.
Here is the same staircase today, looking up towards the bricked up entrance. A passageway leads to a fork, allowing you to go either left or right, and is protected by a machine gun position firing straight down the corridor. We are first going to turn right to explore the area used by Hitler's personal staff. The first compartment was a kitchen. The meals for Hitler and his personal staff would have been prepared here, including by Hitler's personal dietitian, Constanza Manziali. It was the largest underground kitchen on the Orbisalzberg. Not much remains of the fixtures and fittings except in the ceiling. This Siemens manufactured extraction unit is still bolted firmly in place. The next room has come to be called the Archive. It held Hitler's personal documents, files, record collection, manuscripts, speeches and lots of other paper documents and had a very stout steel door for protection against fire. Here is what it looked like in May 1945, after the Americans took over. Small fragments of the records from Hitler's collection are mixed in with the floor detritus today. Moving along, on the left is the telephone switchboard. Orbisalzberg had 800 separate telephone lines and everyone was connected to the German national telephone network. Hello? Hello! There were also direct lines that existed to the Reich Chancellery in Berlin, the Wolf's Lair in East Prussia, and all the various ministries of state and military headquarters throughout the Reich. The wooden door frames are very well preserved today as the rooms are very dry. Passing by ladies and gents lavatories on the right, the next room is the battery room, which housed huge acid batteries to power the telephone switchboard machinery. The gas produced by the acid batteries was drawn out of the room via a gas lock, which we see here in the top of the wall. The room has a tile floor as it was a working space, unlike the other cabins that generally had parquet flooring for comfort. This is the bunker for Hitler's staff from his house above. The parquet floors were torn up and stolen after the war. In this bunker, the original electrical junction boxes have survived remarkably well. 
The walls also show a line where wooden panelling was once installed, also looted post-war. Moving back to the main entrance tunnel and going left instead of right leads you towards Hitler's area, a very private and well-guarded area of the bunker system. First room on the left was a bunker for the Berghof's manager, who with his domestic staff ran the building above. Opposite is the bunker for Hitler's valet, SS Obersturmbannführer Heinz Linger. The remains of a bell line is visible, so that Hitler could ring for Linger when he needed him. We now approach the most secure part of the system, Hitler and Eva Braun's private domain. It had an internal wooden door, which stood where the bricks had been exposed. On the left are staff lavatories. Immediately on the right, beyond the door, is room 13. Hitler's private suite consisting of four rooms. An ante-room, a living room, a bedroom, and finally a bathroom and toilet. In Hitler's time, the walls would have been panelled halfway up, and the floor parquet with rugs. Expensive furniture, similar to that from the Berghof, would have filled the rooms. The bathroom door has been bricked up post-war as guests at the nearby Hotel zum Türken could access the Berghof bunker from the hotel's bunkers, and used to chip off Hitler's bathroom tiles as souvenirs. The next bunker, number 12, was the small medical room and operating theatre used by Hitler's personal physician, Dr. Theodor Morell. Dr. Morell was never far from Hitler, as Hitler was somewhat of a hypochondriac. Here we see brackets remaining that once held a large sink for cleaning medical instruments. Room number 11 was Eva Braun's suite, exactly the same as Hitler's except that it didn't have an anteroom and the bathroom was slightly larger. Let's travel back to May 1945 to see how it was furnished. You can see the wood panelling, the built-in cabinets, and the rugs that I mentioned earlier that would have appeared the same in Hitler's rooms. Everything you see was stripped by looters just after the war, or taken by American soldiers as souvenirs. Quite a bit of this material turns up in auctions even today.
Room number 10 was Dr. Morell's private living quarters. The final room in Hitler's private section is number 9, which was used as a shelter by his SS bodyguards and Berghoff Jr. staff members. At the end of the passage was another portal that originally held a wooden door to block off Hitler's private domain from the rest of the bunker. Beyond is a gas decontamination room and a bunker for Hitler's escort command bodyguards. The tunnel is now bricked up, as I mentioned, and you used to be able to stand on the other side of it, which belongs to the Hotel zum Turken. Originally this area was used by the RSD for their underground headquarters. The door with a metal grill was a kennel for Hitler's dog, Blondie. We now see the American war correspondent exit the Berghof bunker complex via emergency exit number one, which still exists today, below the road that passes around the Berghof ruins. The devastation from the British air raid is all too obvious as the American officer makes his way up to the road. In this final piece of film, famous American general Omar Bradley visits the Berkhoff bunkers, and we see him leave later with some souvenirs. So, for the foreseeable future, and perhaps forever, Hitler's bunker tunnels will remain closed to everyone, but I hope this program at least gives you a flavour of what remains hidden beneath this wooded hillside today. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.